All right. So I'll start by just talking about like my backstory, not, not even backstory, but just kind of like what got me into doing Minus World. Um, I got my 80%. I got a sub five like three, four weeks ago at this point. Um, and I was planning to go back to SM64 and just speed run that for like multiple months. And then I ran along Minus World. I don't know who I saw streaming at first. It might have been Cosmic. Um, I don't know who the first streamer was, but I saw it. I really liked the whole aspect of like breaking the shit out of the game. Um, meaning like Minus World is not supposed to be an accessible world. You go into it and like if you haven't seen Minus World before, uh, you'll see how broken these levels actually are. Um, so it just really interested me and the fact that using uh, Big Mario and clipping in that way is a lot easier and it's something that anybody can do that you don't have to learn 1-2-G you don't have to learn uh, 120 blaze it or 1-2 blaze or whatever it's called um, in order to do this you can I know this is the big clip does rely on some random sub pixels sometimes so depending on where you're trying to clip sometimes the sub pixels won't be good and that's kind of just our from what I as far as I know it's RNG based um, Going off of what like Alden has said to me before, I don't like I said I don't know all the details with the clip of why you know Big Mario clip works sometimes you know in one spot and why it doesn't could be RNG. Um, that's what it felt like at least I could tell you that much. Um, at this point, I've done like you guys can see it. It took me two thousand one hundred thirty four attempts. I really think that took me long, much longer than it should have. <laughs> it took me like. A little over a thousand, maybe like a thousand two hundred to get this two thirty six, and then almost another thousand attempts to get this two thirty five. So all in all, I felt like it took me a little too long to get it. It's okay though. At the end of the day, I'm not. I'm just happy I did get it. Um, this is a this is a really frustrating category in the sense that like I had a blast doing it, but it was basically on two tricks. It was on getting the big clip and then getting uh, FPG and minus two, or minus one. Um, and I had that uh, a lot of runs I got to minus two, but then I would end up dying to a bad cheap cheap pattern um, or something like that. Or, and I'll go into talking a little more about that in a second. But um, for the most part though, I had a lot of fun with this category and learning all the tricks that went along with it. I do plan on maybe learning like 1-2-G eventually. I did practice it a little bit, but it's not something that's like super consistent. Um, real quick though, let me just take a second and I did forget one thing. But yeah, no, for the, for, for the most part, I don't regret all the time that I spent trying to um, trying to get this time and the thing is I wasn't really expecting a 235 in the first place uh, so let's go change the title for minus world ending 235 commentary alright so yeah let's start I don't, again, I don't want this to be like a super long commentary where I'm like just rambling for a long ass time but uh, I wanted to give a little bit of backstory in that regard. So this again, yeah, this was just me practicing before the run, and I learned this from looking at like Cosmic's videos and things like that. And I'm also a speedrunner on the leaderboard. His name is Captain Speedrun. He hits all the same frame rules that I hit. Um, his minus three was just not as good, and the reason I'm bringing him up is because. I had multiple runs where I'd be a frame roll I had this 236 and more of a 236 my last PB and I would get to the cheap cheap pattern and it would have been possible but it would be really tricky at one of the jumps and I just I might have gotten there three times on pace and died to it so I was starting to lose my mind I was messing around with different timings like different frame roll timings like it would be uh, like I started with one frame rule that gave me the really bad cheap cheap pattern. So I was starting my timer at like three minus three point oh eight or something, 
And then I tried to extend it another frame rule, and that was 343. Um, and just kind of was going to kind of just see and hope, oh, okay, this, this, hopefully this isn't a bad cheap cheap pattern. And then I saw the guy, like I said, like the guy that I mentioned before, Captain Speedruns. I saw his run. He hits all the same frame rules, and he has a really easy cheap cheap pattern. And that's because he was resetting on the first frame rule. So, like, as you see, and the easiest way that I saw, at least, is when you're trying to get it on the first frame rule of the title screen, um, to start with a zero and then just, like, start with no negative delay or anything like that. So, the frame rule right when the game starts was the one that I was going for. As you can see, I instantly, as soon as I reset, you see the game for a few frames and then it's instantly right into it. So... I struggled a lot with getting a 380 and 1-1. One, one. I always do. I'm just a bad player, you know. Um, how do I get this playing full speed? This is still slow. Hmm. All right, whatever. I'll go in slow motion like this then. It's fine. Um, I'm going to kind of just skip through a little bit of this. Just because um, it's not that one one is not that important, but basically you get a three eighty. That's clutch. I struggle. I do struggle with three eighties a decent amount. I'm like the king of doing, um, or getting the frame rule with a three seventy nine. <laughs> I wish there was just like a play button on here though. I don't know. I thought there was. Uh, I think holding over, I could just do that instead. That's kind of nice. Anyway, so we get the three. We get basically. I got every frame rule I wanted to get on here. I feel like the only way I could really save a frame rule in one dash two would be is if I get the first uh, mushroom grab in the very beginning of it. And that mushroom grab is something, so it's this, this block right here has a mushroom in it. And um, it's something that I thought about implementing, but it's just one frame rule. And it makes the whole minus, or the whole 1-2 a lot harder. Using Big Mario, you have to do a lot of crouch jumping and so forth. So being able to just be small Mario, and I think that's apparent in a lot of categories. Like Big Mario just kind of sucks. Even the cheap cheaps and minus two, it's much easier with small Mario. Um, and that's why the, uh, people do the small fire Mario and Warpless, just because it's a lot better. Like, that's what I'm going to do when I start Warpless. Because it's a lot easier, too. Hey, I like the over the platform here. This little movement it makes you look like you're a really good player. And that's, you know, that's a big part of the game. Um, I see a lot of people hold left here for this jump. I never really understood it. Like if it's, I think you have like one to three frames for this jump, or something like that, without uh, holding left. So, um, at least with any percent, I know that the three forty six frame rule is uh, very. There's a lot of leeway. Like you can hold left in this spot. It does make it easier. Um, but I've gone. I, I don't know. I used to for a while do like a slower movement for that, but I ended up switching to just holding right. And same with the pipe jumps, too. I see a lot of people holding left here. And I end up just holding right the entire time. Um, I don't know if that really affects me making the frame rules. I don't think it would. I think I'll still be able to make uh, the frame rules I'd wanted to by holding left. But it's something I've gotten used to doing. And maybe one day will help me. I know, like, with setups to 1-2-G, um, you have to hold right the entire time. The only problem is a lot of times, and this happened in my last PV in my 236, is I always slide off this pipe. This is like my, one of my biggest issues. If I So I'll mistime the jump or I'll be too far to the right and I'll end up sliding it down here and bonking and having to jump. And that loses at least a frame rule. A lot of times it'll lose me like two frame rules and the run will be dead. So not even a minus world thing, but just uh, in general. That's my biggest threat with these pipe jumps for sure. Um, and what I was saying before too, uh, like earlier in my stream, I was talking about how it took me over an hour in this night of attempts for
for me to get a big Mario clip the first try. So it was a really bad night of attempts. Like, I've never, it's never taken me over an hour to get into minus one on pace. Um, the big thing is usually flagpole glitch for me. And the fact that, so I started a whole hour with no success, did like another hour, had some more success, and then it finally came together. Um, I was getting weird clips too where like Mario would kind of slide before I was able to run. Like you kind of see how he slid there. This one isn't as bad, but some of the other ones I've had like last night were really bad. You don't want to slide here at all, like or as least amount as possible because it's much slower than just turning around and running. Yo, Andrew, what's up, dude? Um, with doing this so much, I've learned that like you can't beat yourself up with this clip because of the sub pixels of randomness with it. Like, where did I land here? I attempted the clip right here. Usually I try and get Mario right in the middle of the pipe. So I have one off, one on. And then I try my best to go vertical. You want to go vertical for a little bit straight up before holding right. So I don't hold right up until like here. This is when I start holding right. If you hold right too early, then you'll, you won't get high enough on it. You really kind of want to like slide into the top of this. It's hard to explain. But like how you kind of go up and slide into it. Um, for a while also too, it's, uh, I didn't realize the importance of doing a backwards jump here just because it stops your momentum and you're able to do the clip instantly. For a while I was doing a forward jump and then losing at least a frame roller tool up to just to setting it up. And getting into this pipe again is not something as easy as it looks. I've had many runs die to going too far, sliding off here, um, being too far to the left. And the worst is when you get Mario, like, you'll get, like, right around here, but you'll be, like, too far to the right or something like that, and he just won't go down the pipe. He'll just start crouching. So that's that's the saddest thing ever. Um, because, again, like, these first start cl clips, they're RNG uh, with your sub pixels. So even if you do have a good setup, at the end of the day, you can still completely miss it just because the sub pixels aren't aligned correctly. So the fact that when you get, my point is when you get this clip, you want to make it count and to have this pipe ruin it is very sad. Uh, minus one is a pretty free level for the most part. Even with Big Mario, you don't really um, think too much in this level. You just got to make sure you don't ever bonk. And this is, you know, this is a fear in my head as I'm swimming. You can't ever walk on any of these platforms so you will slow down completely. And if you touch these platforms, uh, it takes away the chance of getting a 234 on the timer. Um, I'll talk about that a little bit with FPG. But, so, other than that, though, the only thing that could really go wrong in this level is Bowser here. Um, and you can go under to avoid him completely, but with my confidence level, I've tried to go under before. Oh, look, there's a hammer, bro. <laughs> I tried to, and I, I almost always end up messing up this movement. So I kind of just got to the point where I was like, okay, I'm just going to take the Bowser RNG and hope that he doesn't hit me. Um, so when I mean Bowser hitting you, is so I got really, like, I got lucky here. Bowser was really far back. There's almost, there's virtually no way he's going to hit me unless I make an absolutely ginormous mistake and somehow swim into him that far away. Uh, but a lot of times he can be like up here, like right around where my mouse is. And if he's up here, then there's a lot less leeway. And he has a hitbox. He's just like a, you know, he's like a normal Bowser. So if you hit him, you, you take damage. Um, so then you have to try and time. You don't want to step on this block because then you'll, you know, you'll mess up and you'll get fireworks for FPG. But you, you know, if you hit him, the run is dead at the end of the day too. So... You know, I got lucky there. But other than that, uh, minus one is pretty straightforward for the entire level. There's no real uh, difficult part other than, you know, FPG at the end. I've had runs, honestly. Embarrassingly enough, I've had runs die to either running into this platform or walking on it for a second. Uh, so that's, I mean, the one big thing is just to make sure you don't walk, like, you're swimming the entire time, you don't ever walk on any of these platforms, you don't bog into anything. 
uh, for you to get to 234 and avoid fireworks. So we're coming up to FPG. I've seen a lot of people do different setups for this. And when I started out, um, I think I kind of went off of what I saw people use Big Mario or what setups people use while doing the Big Mario clip. Um, and so I saw various ones. And I see that there's a lot of different ways that people do it. Like, if you go on the leaderboard and you go through the top 20 people, you'll see that not, I mean, there's kind of a similarity to a lot of them, but everyone has, like, their own different feel to this trick, I guess you could say. So, I kind of took, a, like, slightly what Cosmic did and, like, tweaked it around what worked for me, what I could get that consistently. Um, so my setup is not really anything, I mean, it's similar to Cosmic's, but it's not, it's not anything, like, exact or anything like that, but I've seen various setups of people, like, bouncing off the, the roof of the level, too, it's, it's crazy, but if it works, it works, you know what I mean? So, like, what I was saying before, though, I was talking about a 234 compared to a 233 on this level, so, uh, game works, um, 136, last digit, gives you fireworks, so if you get a two four uh, two thirty three, you'll end up getting three fireworks. It's it will be slower than getting two thirty four. Uh, getting flagpole glitch with a two thirty three is still faster than not doing flagpole glitch at all though. Um, and just like going in the middle of the oops, spot my table, going in the middle of the uh, flagpole. So um, the important thing, other than not bonking or walking during the stage is to make sure that you don't walk too far. You want to be able to, when you land here, go straight into the flagpole. If you walk too much, or even just a little bit too slightly, you'll end up uh, getting a 233. And I was lucky enough, you see I walked here, so you can get away with walking a teeny bit. Um, and I was able to still get FPG in minus one. Uh, and I, when I got this last night, when I was doing the run, I thought to myself, oh, that's, that's fireworks, the run's over. And I was laughing because that was, might have been my third or fourth firework FPG that night. It was, it was the weirdest thing. I was hitting FPG so much last night, but nine times out of ten, I would end up walking and getting fireworks. So this, this was really close. The fact that I walked a little bit and still got it is crazy. So... Anyway, back to the setup a little bit. I tried to, um, once I get to the hammer, bro, I kind of, I stay all the way to the top just so that, um, it gives me the same type of pattern where Mario is going to be swimming every single time because I'll drop off of the top of the ceiling. Pattern meaning like if I don't do this and I fall down here, uh, if I don't do this, I'm just swimming here. I might not be at the right height. So I'm trying to time my height with this. This is why I'm swimming at the top like that. If I'm just swimming down here, I mean, you can still do it completely fine. But what would end up happening is, with me is I wouldn't be able to get on the right height. So the height that I'm looking for is literally right around these these clouds, like right around here. Right, uh, I'm a little far up than my normal setup that I do, so I improvised a little bit. But right around these clouds... And then I do a swim right at the end of this cloud. This is when I start my swim. And I do three three swims. And it's kind of like a rhythm, like a like it's not so it's not fast swimming. And again, now with depending on where your height is, at least with my setup, if you're up a little higher or if you're down a little lower, you have to swim accordingly. So you have to do either slower swims to get more distance. Or faster swims to cover less. Um, but when I'm right in the middle, it's generally the... If you can hear that, I think my, my keys are pretty loud. So. So one, two, three. And then once I hit the third bump, I hold, I keep holding A. Which, uh, holding A with a swim allows you to go farther down quicker. Like it, it, it de-elevates you quicker. It makes you go to the ground lower. If I didn't hold swim here, I would go flying... I'd probably land like right like here or something like that. Like I would I wouldn't need to be close. So um hold A all the way through. And then again I walked a little bit here and ended up getting it. I just luckily like that was on two let me see. Like look how long this is on two thirty four. Like how I don't 
I must have gotten like within a frame or two of it changing. Because look, 234 starts right here. And somehow, with all this walking, it doesn't change to a 233. I, I, pfft. hell man, I won't complain. I just, I wasn't expecting it. So at this point in my head, I'm thinking to myself, all right, it's fireworks. Like, maybe I'll get lucky and I'll hit the clip in minus three and somehow get like a 0.1 PB. Um, but then, you know, there were no fireworks. And at this point, right around here, I was like, oh shit. Okay, actually, this run is actually real. Oh fuck. So, I was surprised, not complaining though, for sure. And this is all just to save a frame rule, too. In my previous PB, the only frame rule I lost was that sliding off the pipe in my in one dash two that I was talking about earlier. So, all right. So for minus two, though, this level really again, depending on what frame rule you're on, the cheap cheaps change. And since this is such a short run, it's pretty easy to decipher what frame rule what the cheap cheaps are going to be and to see what frame rules are bad frame rules and what which ones are good so um again like I, I said a little bit in the beginning of the video i got to this point on this exact pace three or four times um i was starting the game on the second frame rule so i was starting at i think it's the second right because first would be instantly. So yes, I, I was doing a delay of minus 3.08. So whatever frame rule that is, that's what I was starting on. Um, and that was biting me in the butt with the cheap cheap pattern. And like I said before, I changed it up and finally saw this one uh, where you don't, you start as soon as the game can. So this frame, again, this, this cheap cheap pattern is free for sure. The only slightly tight jump is right here, and this isn't really even that tight. This jump over the Koopa, or over the, yeah, over the Koopa, and just barely missing the cheap cheap. Other than that, though, um, the, with the bad frame rule before that I died and messed up a, a, a shitload of times, the cheap cheap would be like right here, like for this jump. So it was, it wasn't impossible. It can be done, but it was, it was a really tight jump. Other than that, though, this this pattern was amazing. Like, look look at this. This is no cheap cheeps. They're like, where where are they? They're not even here. Like, this can be also depending on the frame rule. This section right here can be brutal. The thing you want to do, the easiest movement, is just jump on the first one, jump to the third one, and then another jump, like I just did. But sometimes there'll be cheap cheeps falling right here, and you'll have to do three quick jumps or something like that. So that can be tedious too. But again, like. This, this frame rule of uh, cheap cheap patterns is super nice. And then I hit FPG right here. Ready? <laughs> no, I'm just joking. You can, I'm pretty sure you could do FPG with Big Mario. That, that does exist. I don't know if a human's done it or if it was Taz, but this, I mean, staircase, staircase is just in general, or monk ass when you're on a really good pace, but this, I definitely was shitting my pants right here. I just want to see... I did land just on the tip of it. <laughs> um, and if you don't get hit by cheap cheeps, you run the entire time without stopping. You always get a 240. And I learned from one of my previous uh, PBs, I think it was my 237. It doesn't matter if you hit the bottom of the pipe for this, for this level. Instead of the top of the pipe, you don't lose a frame roll from the bottom. I've learned that too. Some level is like 1-1. One, one you'll lose the 380 frame rule if you don't get the top of the flagpole. Like, if you hit the bottom. But for this level, you're good. No matter where you hit it. As long as you run the entire time. At this point, I was ready to shit myself. I had one run on this pace get to minus three, and I <laughs> I threw it away because uh, my input got eaten in the very beginning. And with my movement that I do in this level, and just in general, like, it's not a hard level. It's a really easy level. But it's one of those things where, like, it's really easy, but it's at the end of the at the end of the end run. So you're sweating. Like, I'm sweating my balls off at this point, you know. Um, so it's easy, but if you're really nervous and you mess up an input, you could, you could throw the run away. So that did happen to me once. And it's uh, right here. So you slide off, do a jump right here, which you could miss time. 
Then you do a quick jump, quick jump, and then another jump. And uh, in my last, or not, my last attempt on this pace to minus three, I got my input eaten right here. And I just ran off the cliff because he didn't jump. It was sad. So I was paying attention to that. That happened to me. I didn't want it to happen again. You see how I ran a little bit before I pressed A? Because I was not letting that happen again. <laughs> um, in my other, in my last PB2, my 236, this clip right here, or it's not a clip. I don't know why I'm calling that. Breaking the roof right here. It's better, in my opinion, to do a backwards jump. So I don't do a backwards jump. That's something that I don't really regret because this was a really fast minus three, even with the, without that. But it would have been slightly faster if I did use it, I think. So because I didn't do a backwards jump, um, I have to like wait for Mario's momentum for a split second before I can jump to break the blocks here. Because if I don't, then when I jump, Mario will keep sliding to the right. And then... I won't be under the brick that I just broke. I'll be under another brick. And I'll have to either run back and jump, or I'll have to break a second brick and then climb up there, which is slow as hell. So, um, luckily I timed it right where he was basically fully stopped by the time I jumped. You can end up losing like 0 0.3, 0 0.4 just from doing what I just said there and breaking two blocks accidentally instead of one. And that's why it is better to do the backwards jump because you stop your momentum way easier when you land going the opposite direction than having to turn Mario like that. But it worked out. I probably only lost a little bit of frames compared to it. Um, and I was planning on, if I was tied with this PB up to minus three, I was planning on attempting to clip. Uh, there is a clip that you can do with Big Mario in Minus 3. It's right here. So where my mouse is is where you would run. And you I forget exactly what it is, if it's like a 2 or 3 frame jump. But you do a 2, two or 3 frame crouch jump right here. And you can clip into the wall. And then do another jump and get right here. That would probably save like... I'm spitballing here. I'm spitballing. But it probably saved 0 0.3, 0 0.4 over what I just did in this run. Um, and like, it makes uh, 235 way freer. And I didn't expect this to be a 235. My goal for this category was a low 236. I was looking at, I, kind of, I wanted like a 236.2, 0.3. I basically just wanted to save this frame rule. And if I had another not-so-great minus three, I still would have been fine. I probably still would be doing this commentary right now, too. Um, but the fact that it was a 235 makes it way more special for me. Um, although, guys, although there's no Bowser and it's just the axe, although that's the case, I'm trying to tell you, man, I have seen runners lose runs to missing the axe. Um, I have seen a runner lose a sub-5 to missing the axe at the end. Like Bowser jumped forward and they missed the axe and they lost sub-5 because of that. Roy LT, I'm calling him out, dude. <laughs> he, I'm pretty sure, I think it was him. He had like a uh, beat 5-4. Uh, he had a run that was going to be world record. And he ended up getting it like I think the same night or the next day or something like that. But he lost a world record, a B54, to an axe grab. So when it came to minus world, for me, knowing that, I've never I've never done that myself, but the fact that that was in my mind, like, I was terrified. So um, this was actually a pretty decent axe grab for the most part. I don't know how much. I couldn't tell you off of just looking, you know, what I lost. Like, if I lost any frames to the axe grab, if I lost one frame to but I can't tell you just by looking at it. But I think it was a pretty decent X grab, or I might have only lost a few if, at most. Um, but, yeah, it is scary, though. Like, you're not done when you're, you know, you're up here running. Like, you know, the run is not done. I'm, the whole time I was running, I'm thinking to myself, grab the X, grab the X, grab the X. Uh, and again, it's one of those things where it's like, it's something that's so easy. It's just jumping into the X, but because it's so easy and it's at the end of the run, you can mess it up. Um, I retimed it using this program too. It goes frame by frame. And I got a 235.93.
So again, really happy with this PB and everything like that. I'm able to put minus world aside for a little while. Um, and it took me, it took me 2,134 attempts. You know what I'm saying? So I'll show you guys real quick where every, where all the magic did happen. Kind of, if I can wrap my, my cam around and show you guys a little bit what my setup looks like. It's kind of hard for me to wrap the webcam. It gives the webcam, you know what I mean? It's plugged into the computer. That's the PC I'm working with though. Um, where I do all my emulator runs on, you know. They use Nestopia. Fucking, where's that? Nestopia EXE, this bad boy. Version 1.4, I went and looked right here. Oh, this is the wrong one. Let's just show you. This is what I used for, for runs. Look, we can do, uh, oop, that's not right. Sorry. We can do, uh, fucking. Minus for us, look at this, we do FPG right now, with one hand I'm doing FPG. Ready for this? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, this is my keyboard though. Let's continue to look at this program. Keyboard where all the matching happens, where you hear me slamming on the keys and stuff, I use WASD. Again, I would love, I, I wish I could show a better angle, but again, this is connected. But I use WASD to move, you can see it's all connected to the, the NOAA board, no board, whatever it's called. D, you can see everything's all synced up. Um, and then for B and A, I use the uh, zero on the keypad. And I also use the, oh look, I can still hear the game. <laughs> I use the period on the D-pad for A. So that's my setup. Uh, it's pretty basic, you know what I mean? Uh, I have another monitor broke recently though, so I'll be buying another monitor soon. Alright. Let me put this back though. Ugh.